In this lecture, we'll take a look at how we can upload a file and store it in Azure Blob Storage using Node.js serverless Azure functions. The first thing that we need to do is go into storage accounts and create one storage account. Like over here, we have one storage account created and inside that storage account, you can add by clicking on the add button. I have one already created, but you can add it while adding you need to select storage type v2 so here on create storage account you will be required to select your subscription and the source group once you do that you provide the storage name and ensure that account kind is of type storage v2 and access type default is set to default selection hot and then you can review and create it once you have created your account the next thing that you need to do after creating the account is go inside that account and then create a container. So you'll see all these options coming up, queues, tables, file shares. We'll be creating a container to store our files. So clicking on container will allow you to add a new container. So here you can click on container option and you can give it a name then and you can provide a name and here you can select public access level. By default, it's set to private, no anonymous access. That is what you should keep until unless you have a good reason making it public. Once done, you can click on create and that's pretty much it that you need to do from storage account point of view. Now, the next thing that we need to do is create an Azure function in Node.js which will allow us to upload the file. In order to do that, we'll be going to home and here, to our function app that we created. Now you can create one function app right from scratch. To do that, just go to home and here, just click on this app service. And clicking on this app service will allow you to create a new function application. So again, you will be selecting your subscription, your resource group, and then you'll be providing it a name and here you need to select your runtime stack. So in my case, the runtime stack is node 12 LTS. That is what I've selected. And after that, you can choose whether you want a Linux plan or some other. By default, it will make a selection for you. And then click on this button, review and create. So once you have your function app created, the next thing that you need to do is go inside that function app and create a function. For instance, here inside this we have created a function called upload resume. Now this is going to upload a file. So when you create a function, it's pretty easy actually. So here if you click on this and go to add button, you'll be asked what kind of function you want to create. Now obviously I'm going to create HTTP trigger. So you select HTTP trigger and then give it a name. For instance, I've provided it as upload resume. And then the authorization level, you can select as anonymous, admin, or function. If you select anonymous, then obviously anyone who will have access to the function URL will be able to access the function. Once you have created the function definition, you will be taken to this page where you have this integration option and code plus test option. Now inside this code plus test option, when you'll go, you'll have to write few lines of codes. Now, a couple of things that we need to ensure is that we have to have these, these packages installed as your blob storage and parse multipart. To do this, you will have to install these in your function app that you have created. Now, how you will do that? Let's make a copy of this link, open it up and then inside the function app, when you go to this function app, inside that you will find one menu option called advanced tools. Click on that and here click on the go button. Now as I mentioned, we need to ensure that these two packages are installed, parse multipart and Azure storage blob. So here using the kudu service, go to debug console, click on CMD. Inside that you need to go to that directory where your function has been created. So usually it's inside site, www root and then you traverse to the folder where you have to install these packages like in my case it's upload resume so here you will go and first of all you will have to type npm init once you do this 
After pressing enter, because I've already done it, you can see the package .json file has been created. Press enter and provide whatever necessary values it's asking for. And once that's done, next step that you need to do is install these packages by typing npm install azure slash blobs blob storage as mentioned over here storage blob and once done similarly you need to install another package that we have over here called parse multipart so that also we can install using npm install parse multipart so you can press enter now and this will install these two packages one by one and once done you can come back to this page where we have the code now you can see that we have one blob service client created and then this multipart identifier apart from that we also have storage connection string now from where this value will come so when you have created the storage account let's go back to our storage account for a moment here we will go back to our storage account now inside this account you go to the access keys option click on that and uh, you will see these connection strings coming up key 1 connection string key 2 connection string you need to copy this connection string over here by clicking on this click copy to clipboard account and once done what you need to do is go to the function app that we have created so here inside our function app you will be getting one option called configuration so go to configuration and then once it's loaded you can go and click on this new application setting button and provide the key over here and value over here so the value that you have copied will be coming over here and name will be coming over here in my case i've already done that so you can see the zero storage connection string shown over here so do remember that you need to click on the save button otherwise that setting will never be stored and your function will return internal server error so once you have the connection string mentioned in the configuration come back over here in the code and here you can see pretty easily that what we are doing till these three lines is that we have the file now with us and here we are just using the multi-part package that we have included and using that all we are doing is getting the actual file that we have uploaded so using this parts we will be getting the file name, the data, the length of it, everything. And that is what we will be sending to our blob storage. So, once we have the file with us, with all the information, next thing that we do is, we create a blob service client using the connection string. After that, we have the container where we will be uploading this blob item. In my case, it's candidate resume. After that, we have created the container client so here using the blob service client instance that we had we are creating this get container client and we're passing the container name that will return us the container client once we have the container client we have taken the file name which we have uploaded using the parts of zero dot file name and then here we are creating the block blob client using the container client so we are passing the file name over here once that's done this method that we this constant that we have created block blob client provides a method called upload where you pass the data as well as the total length of the data once you do that it will return a response upload blob response and you can return this response in my case i'm just returning the file name type and length you can get this value and that will be basically an id of the resource that will be stored in the blob storage so that's pretty much that we have over here now how you will call this function from your file to do that you just go to this get function url and this is going to provide you the function and the function url and you just need to click on this copy once you have copied it all you need to do is go to your visual studio code editor and here you can see i've created a pretty simple file so here is the url that you will be getting from your function that you just created and after that it's just one file uploader here we have provided the name file name and type submit clicking on the submit button will call this action via the post method and in type is multipart form data now here when we created this application when you go to integration 
you'll see this trigger coming up because that is the HTTP trigger function we have created. So when you do that, you will get the option what kind of HTTP method this function is going to support. So we have post and put supported. And that's the reason why in our form that we are creating to upload files, we have the method post defined over here. And once you have this file, let's open it, uh, let's open it up in the browser. So here we have our file running now. Let's choose a file. And let's say we have this file to be uploaded, screenshot.jpg. Click on open and then click on submit. And there you go. It says a name as a screenshot.jpg. Data length is 93958 bytes and type is image slash jpeg. Now, in order to see whether it has been uploaded or not, let's go to our storage account. Click on storage explorer view. And here, go inside blob containers. Then you'll see candidate resumes. And here, the file that we have uploaded should appear. And there you go. Screenshot.jpg has been uploaded successfully. So that's how you upload files to Azure Blob Storage using Azure Serverless Node.js functions.